He's Senator Roger Marshall. Senator, we, it's a pleasure. We thank you so much for helping us out tonight. Senator, let's look at this. Remember this great American moment when, when George W. Bush threw out the first pitch at a Yankee game after 9-11. Watch this. Wow, and, and Senator, he threw a strike. Remember that? That was a convening, a convening, unifying moment. But now the Biden White House is explaining why Biden is not in New York City, uh, saying that 22 years after Pearl Harbor, U.S. President is still not going to visit Hawaii. I mean, 9-11 families say this is the opposite of never, never forget. Senator, what do you think? Well, Liz, I think that a short fuel stop on the way home from a very unsuccessful, embarrassing trip abroad is not the way to celebrate 9-1-1. I think most of us remember that it was 8.46 a.m. this morning when that first, uh, first tower went down and was struck by a terrorist. Um, almost 3,000 Americans lost their lives that day. 400 first responders ran to the sound of battle and lost their lives. And thousands of people since then still suffer or lost their lives as a sequelae from that uh, attack. Uh, so I think this is totally inappropriate. It shows us how, how out of touch uh, this current president is. It's a very sad moment. And, and I just want to stop myself and, and offer my condolences to all those folks that lost loved ones at 9-11 and let them know that we're still with you. Yeah, we, you know, we've not forgotten. Senator, my family, they don't like it when I bring this up, but we lost a family member 9-11. Mm. My sister's brother-in-law was a fireman and Chuck died at 9-11. So we had dozens of people in our hometown die in 9-11. And, you know, these guys just wake up. They're like cops, health, re, you know, health responders, they, you know, Port Authority guys. They just go in and do the job. They're not looking for cheer, cheerleading as the, making themselves out to be heroes. They're just worried that this president is showing it is okay to forget when they can never forget. Yeah, it is that, that simple. Um... Again, I think we all I remember that morning myself. I was talking to a family after doing a surgery. I was in a surgery uh, post-op area, and I saw on the screen this plane crashing into a tower. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what type of movie is this? And then minutes later, the second crash into the building as well. So we need to stop and remember these folks. And I don't know about you, but I don't think the war on terror is over with. There's nothing to stop and forget about yet. I think this war is going to be going on for several years. We need to honor our fallen always. And think about, if nothing else, just for the kids uh, that were children then but are grown adults. We need to just pause and remember that their parents maybe gave their life running towards yeah. that sound of the battle uh, as well as the other 3,000. And Senator, you know what George W. Bush showed, what people wanted was September 12th when yeah. the nation came together as one, setting aside party affiliations. They don't want never forget to turn into never mind. You know what I mean? It's, and they don't even want to be applauded as heroes. I'm very close with a firehouse that lost 15 firemen. They, they say we're just doing our jobs, but they don't understand. They're confused, Senator. We've got to move on to this. Uh, let's move on to Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre cutting, cutting off President Biden's microphone. He lost his way during a rambling press conference in Vietnam. You're going to hear that. You're going to uh, also hear David Axelrod weighing in. Um, let's listen to the sound. Watch this. I think this is in Joe Biden's hands, and he has to decide uh, whether he can uh, whether he can complete this task and win this election and prevent uh, what many people fear would be a disaster for the country. And if not, then he should step aside. He may have a game plan. He just hasn't shared it with me. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. I'm just following my orders here. Uh, staff, or does anybody haven't spoken to uh, No, I ain't calling on you. I'm calling on you. I said there are five questions. ...out of fossil fuels, it won't be possible to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement. There was no agreement at the G20 on fossil fuels. How concerned are you about this lack of consensus? We talked about making sure that the third world, the, uh, excuse me, third world, the, uh, the, the, uh, the southern hemisphere had access to change it, had access. We, it wasn't confrontational at all. 
You came with Mary thank, thank you, everybody. This ends thank the count you. press thank conference. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, he gets cut off. You know, this is the leader of the free world. We're supposed to be showing power and strength. I mean, The Hill is reporting top Democrat Party officials, top Senate Democrats are worried. Polls are in the, going in the wrong direction for Biden. When you saw this, what was your reaction? God, I was thinking of Chris Berman saying, rumbling, fumbling, stumbling. Uh, this is an embarrassment that this president is not uh, fit to lead. We've all seen his mental and physical decline, uh, his lapses, and we know that he, he does not have the physical strength or stamina, the mental uh, acuity to be able to be president of the United States. This is the toughest job in the world. Even a person that's physically fit needs all their wits about him. Um, this is why his numbers are falling. This is why probably 60% of Americans don't think he's doing Doing a good job. 70% of Americans are upset about the economy. We've just watched the demise of this nation and the, under the lack of leadership from Joe Biden, whether it's inflation and open border, the, the escape from Afghanistan, uh, his attack on our freedoms as well. So I, I, I think that they should be running from him as fast as they can. Got it. Senator Marshall, again, thanks for your insights and helping us out tonight. It's good to have you on, sir. Appreciate it.